Railroading history is so unique in so many regions of the country simply because how the railroads developed actually influenced the culture, the political history, even religion in some areas by access to railroads. Personally, I've always been interested in railroads, so being the uh, curator here at the museum has given me a chance to really interpret a lot of these stories uh, about railroading and its uh, development um, in the country, not only in South Dakota, but across the country, and really in some situations around the world. But we have a great opportunity here because people can come in and see so many different exhibits based on the railroading. But if they want to ride a train, they can go outside and ride the famous 1880 train, which has been operating here in Hill City, between Hill City and Keystone, for 65 years now, um, which makes it one of the longest operating uh, historic train rides in the United States. If you look here, there's nothing particularly interesting about a railroad coupler, but when you think about the technology that was necessary to create a coupler like that, um, shows a real evolution in, in railroading, and we still use these couplers today. Um, like I said, most people don't look twice at them, but I'll show you an early coupler, and this early coupler will tell you how far we've come. Up on the wall is what's called a link and pin coupler. And that link was used to connect the cars and the pins would lock the cars together. Now, can you imagine how dangerous that would be uh, for a railroad or a brakeman to be able to put the link in and then drop the pins in to hold the cars together? Now, imagine it being a winter night, a snowy night, three o'clock in the morning and you have to make up a train. How do you do that? How do you signal to the engineer that they're together or they're not together? And of course, that's where all the lanterns came in because signals were used by lanterns. There was no radio or any other way to communicate. So hand signals and lanterns. And oftentimes these would not fit or they would not hold together. And the result, the brakeman would lose a finger or lose a hand. These were terribly dangerous ways of connecting cars. So it took the development of the coupler you just saw uh, to make it a much safer proposition. But still, that, that is historically a, a ghastly way of connecting cars together. And maybe you've heard the expression, pull the pin. People do that when they retire. And these pins here, are the basis for that expression. When you pull the pin, that means to uncouple. That means you're basically going to step into a, a different, <laughs> different frame of reference. And, and I like that because it's something no one looks twice at, but it's, it's really significant in terms of the evolution of, of railroad technology. We uh, feature things from all over the state of South Dakota, the different railroads that operated not only here in the Black Hills, but across the state in so many different ways, agriculture, business, even uh, commuter operations around Sioux Falls, trolleys, uh, trolleys that operated between Leed and Deadwood back in the day, uh, mining railroads, logging railroads, and uh, it's just, it's a phenomenal history that we have here in South Dakota regarding railroads. Basically, it's called well, a lot of folks call it anyway, the land of infinite variety. And that really applies to our railroads as well. So many different types of locomotives and cars have been used, but our big uh, focus is telling stories. We tell stories through not only the memorabilia, the model trains, you know, the live uh, equipment, the train outside, but also through different uh, clips we have an area here that talks about the different TVs, uh, TV shows, and uh, movies that have been filmed using the railroads in South Dakota over the years. Uh, some of the most famous were uh, an episode of Gunsmoke, uh, the original How the West Was Won movie filmed in Custer State Park. We are open throughout the summer. We uh, close mid-October. Then we open again between Thanksgiving and Christmas for our, what we call our Trees and Trains exhibit. Then uh, we close 
for January through April and we go out and do different programming around the state of South Dakota. Uh, we also have programs here in the museum and then put in new exhibits for the following year. So if you're interested in finding out more about the museum at any time, just go on our website, sdsrm.org. We just, uh, we have a great opportunity and a great location here to tell the stories. And really that's what museums are about, is telling stories.